So this isn't going to be really a review on on the APC40, it's just more of a demonstration tutorial on how to map uh, effects to inputs on the controller itself and any other controller that you have. Um, APC, the APC40, uh, when you out of the box and you plug it in with uh, Ableton, it works. Uh, it actually is like mapped to a lot of things already. Um, so this this whole bank that you have selected in this red rectangle is going to be mapped to the for, the pads that you have uh, up in the top left co corner here. Uh, if I move around with these arrow buttons here, uh, the the bank will move accordingly. So if I move left and right, I'll move the, the whole arrangement here, um, up and down, left or right. I took our song and I actually uh, copied it and cut it up into different parts so that way I can play them uh, section by section kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to show you how to map uh, effects to your controllers. Uh, in the last video, we mapped the operator frequency and the auto filter frequency to these macro knobs. Um, now we're going to want to map them to uh, knobs on our physical controller. So we just uh, to do that, all we have to do is click Control M, and that'll open up our MIDI mappings option. Click the parameter that you want, and move the parameter or click the button you want to to use. Uh, I'm going to map it to op the the fourth knob here and then for the auto filter I'm going to map it to the uh, the eighth knob here. So when I play, when I solo this one and just play it oops. there we go. So um, that will that way you can control the the, the knob there, and we want to also want to make sure that whatever uh, instrument rack you want to control, you want to make sure that this little hand icon is above it. If I, for example, click the chord and I wanted to move my my macro knob that I bound to the auto filter, um, it's gonna it's it may move the 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 selected one, but if I choose another one, for example, it's gonna move another. It's gonna move. Um, parameters inside of the effect, and that's that's tr something tricky that you want to keep an eye out for, um, when, especially when you're when you're starting out and trying to figure out how to use the controllers. I I don't use the to the, the way I use controllers is more to the, to the effect of using uh, manipulating individual parameters, but it, sometimes if you have an a, a knob that isn't bound to something like if I use macro five, it's going to move the shift five of the chord. And I don't really want that, so just make sure you keep an eye on where this little hand is. So that way, everything is going to be um, reacting accordingly. Um, so uh, another cool thing that you can do is um, say I don't want this auto filter to be on this whole time, and I want it to actually turn off as soon as I max it out. Uh, to do that, uh, you're going to click the map option here, and click the button, the, the on button for the auto filter, and map it to the auto filter here. You can map it to anyone, but just for the for the control that we want to set up here, we're going to map it to the same knob as the auto filter. And up here, you can control the range that it's going to be on in too. So you have to think of it like this: like device on, the minimum and the max are going to be um, the range that it's going to be on for. So if I bring it all the way down to zero, it's going to be on between ranges zero to 127. Now 127 is full, so if I just knock it down, maybe to 124. Um, when I boost this knob all the way down and all the way up, it'll turn off. So it'll sound like this. And then when it reaches around, it'll turn off. There we go. And that's a cool way to kind of have more than one control uh, on effect and um, manipulate it and turn it on and off if you want to do something like that too. So we're going to take that and apply it to the vocal effect too and we're going to add some control some effects here. Um, so the first thing we want to control is again the auto filter in our vocal. So I'm going to solo this and we're going to map it out here. So we're going to take the auto filter and take the frequency and map it to macro 5 
and we're also going to map the, the resonance to macro 5 as well. So when we go down, oops, it's going to do the same thing. But I want to actually keep the, the resonance a little higher uh, so it doesn't, go, it doesn't dip the way it is right now. Um, and again, we go to our mapping options and we just increase the resonance level a little bit here. So that way it kind of uh, stays above that level there. So now when we do it, it's gonna go down, maybe not, not, that, not even that much in terms of the frequency, of the resonance there. And I wanna do the same thing where it turns off. So I'll click the map option, click this, and map it to the same knob. And we'll do the same thing where we have the the on the on range. Sorry, so the camera died. Um, so again, we're gonna set the range for the on and off for the filter. Uh, we're gonna move it down just a couple notches, so it's 125 or something. Uh, it doesn't really matter because it's so so small. But when now when I actually change when I move my macro knob, oops, and I'm playing my vocal. It's gonna be off there. And I'm also gonna to want to control the um, the LFO for the amount. I'll set this to macro two, and I'll set the rate for macro six. So that way I have a little more control there. And then I'm also going to want to map the reverb, so the dry and wet signal of our reverb to macro one. And so, and then maybe I want to—I don't want to max it all the way to 100, so I'll change the limit to, let's see. I want to max it all the way that high, so I'm going to move it down just a bit to maybe 72% was okay. About 56 is okay. And then I'm gonna wanna also I I also want to um, map this freeze option too. So when I I max it, I'm I'm pu pushing the reverb to the max here with the. Um, with the send, I want it to actually hang on a little bit when I bring it back down with this freeze uh, parameter. But I don't want to set it to a, a, a knob, I actually want to use a, a button for this. Um, luckily there are some buttons that are on the uh, APC that you can map to. Um, like I was talking about using this nudge option, uh, these nudge buttons, you can do that there. So if I just click um, the map, this uh, control M, click the parameter and then click the button so I'm going to nudge minus down for the freeze option it's going to turn on the, the freeze now there's going there's there's, a, there's this annoying like piano sound um that's being played and you can kind of hear when I turn on the freeze effect uh, the freeze button and that's because um, buttons have a corresponding note attached to them and basically the way to turn this off is you open up your preferences control comma or click options um, uh, you just can just click you open up your, your preferences go to the MIDI uh, sync tab on the left here Gee, I don't think you can see this. Okay, well that sucks. Um, I'll take a print screen of it anyway. And uh, you can take the, it's it's on your out, your MIDI ports, the outputs, it says Microsoft GS Wavetable, and you wanna make sure that the track, sync, and remote are all off. Um, and that way, you, when you push a button now, it won't make that piano noise. Um, so that's good, we have these, these kind of these effects all set up here too. So we have 
this macro, the dry or wet signal. We also have our pans or our pan and our sends already set up uh, with the, t the track control up here. Um, and we have the filter LFO frequency and the LFO mount up there. Um, down there. So we have a lot of control there. Um, now, another thing we want to the next thing we want to do is uh, add a another filter effect on top of our drum rack. I've done a couple changes. I've added a I've actually layered um, a bass drum onto uh, a bass drum from a 909 on top of our our um, our bass drum. <laughs> so just give it a little more of a it was a sharper attack on it. So it's like it's like this. Oops. So you'll 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 notice it subtly when we solo the track and play like, and I've also tweaked around on other other effects too. But it just gives it that extra little thump, a little like onto our kicks to kind of give it that that hit that we really want. I, I found I felt like it was a bit too dull. Um, now the auto filter we're gonna bind is going to be onto macro knob seven here. So I could do Control M again, click the 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 parameter. Move the knob, and now there you go. It's activated. And then we're going to take the, the the resonance, and we're also going to map it to the same knob too. Uh, but we're gonna reverse it, so it's gonna go, it's gonna go downwards instead of uh, upwards, uh, meaning the the direction of the uh, the filter and the resonance. Oops. What the? There we go. So it's gonna do something like this. But I want I want the resonance to stay pretty high right near the end, so I'm just gonna move it up a little bit more, somewhere like that. Now when I move it, it's gonna go up to there, and just a little bit less, so it's not too high. There we go. That's okay. There we go. I just want to thank you guys for uh, subscribing and watching these videos. It's been a lot of fun to uh, make them. <laughs> um, uh, I hope it's been informative and in, uh, teaching you guys how Ableton works and just how to get production started. Um, I'm going to be giving away actually this, uh, you, this Ableton file. So if you guys just want it, just uh, send me a message and I'll, I'll put it up or something. Or maybe like on a media file or like a share website. I don't know. I'll, I'll figure it out. Um, but I will put it up so that way people who are interested can just download it and then run around in the file and, and play around with it if they, if they feel free to. Um, again, I'm going to be doing more of these videos in the future. Maybe not like a whole series like this, but I'll probably be doing like uh, just like little things I find if I want to make kind of sound, make giveaway sounds or giveaway presets like that. Um, even uh, I think in the, in the last video I talked about setting up a Twitch channel. I think I'm going to be doing that for sure. Um, I'm going to be uh, sending one up and whenever I have a production day, I'll just like send out a tweet or anything like that. So if you guys just want to follow me on Twitter and like that, um, I'll let you guys know about stuff like that. Um, thanks a lot for watching. My battery's almost dead. Okay, bye!